Showtime. I'm here with Stefan Radlich, the managing director of Lucy Global Feed the Hungry. And Stefan, yesterday when we were out and about here in Nicaragua, we really saw, saw some pretty amazing things, yeah. feeding kids and getting the food into kids. But how does that really work? Well, it really is an amazing process here. There's about 300 sites across the country in Nicaragua. Our missionary partners, Ken and Kendra Dowd, are committed and passionate about reaching this generation for Jesus. And uh, really, in these locations, we work with local churches. We saw several of them uh, yesterday, just small churches of maybe from 50 people up to 150 adults serving their communities to bring kids the meals they need so that they can go to school. Without the meal, as you know, Pete, uh, the children don't, don't have much of a chance of getting an education. They've got to get out in the field or out in some of the dump sites that we visited, uh, collecting plastic to earn a few pennies so they can have something to eat that day. When the meal comes, that gives them the entree to get into school. And as one pastor, Pastor Tony, even shared yesterday, he said that the large growth of his church has happened because of the children that were ministered to and their parents wanting to be involved with the ministry that was helping their kids. Now oh, that's pretty cool. Now, of course, we have to have a ministry partner on the ground. Um, how did we actually end up working with Ken and Kendra Dow? Yeah, that's an interesting story. It, it really started with a Google search. Lamar Austin uh, was looking to uh, find a missionary in Nicaragua to work with when we were back at the Louisa ship several years ago. And so he Googled missionaries in Nicaragua. One of them was Troy Dowdy, uh, Troy and Jeanette, who worked with the Assemblies of God. And that started a conversation, which started a, a site visit and kind of just some testing and everything was working great and uh, that's how it started. Now uh, the doubts moved, sorry, the uh, the uh, uh, the folks moved back to the United States and the doubts came in, Ken and Kendra. Uh, and, uh, and Troy said, these young people, these are gonna be your folks. I've taken the program as far as it can go. And at that time there were just about 1,500 kids mm -hmm. or so in the program. Uh, but this young couple, uh, Ken and Kendra Dowd, uh, they're gonna take it much further than I've ever been able to. And so today, uh, oh, 21,000 children are part of the daily meal program that are registered with their names, their heights, their weights, their grades, their schools that they're in. But there's actually close to 30,000 children that are getting help through Feed the Hungry here uh, on a, on a non-consistent basis. Okay, yeah. so you know what's really the need here in a place like Nicaragua? Yeah. I mean it looks beautiful right here right, right now, Right. but what is the need? We're in the best part of the capital, uh, but the country is obviously much larger and Nicaragua is actually the second most impoverished nation in the Western Hemisphere right after Haiti. And so you know you get outside of these walls and you get out into the countryside like we've seen and uh, people are earning between a dollar to two dollars a day trying to make ends meet with that. Uh, there are high issues of alcoholism and drug abuse, uh, high issues of, of, uh, of the sex trade and, and, and human trafficking uh, because people need to do something just to survive. Well, when the gospel can come in and we can bring the love of God in action in and provide a gateway to a child or a, a household of children to get an education, now we're seeing kids that are growing up through this program that are going on to vocational school, they're going on to secondary education, they've got a dream and a vision in their heart to be a pastor, a missionary, to be a welder, a plumber, a carpenter, a businessman, a businesswoman, and, and you can see the, the change that takes place because of the little that we do. You know, one of the exciting things that I saw yesterday when we were in some of the places is passing out spread the word Bibles. What's the impact yeah, of that? That's absolutely huge. And if you talk to Kendra, uh, our missionary partner here, that's taken things to a whole nother level. To be able to put the resource of the Word of God into the hands of the children, in the hands of the pastors, in the hands of the people. Even when we were around yesterday, you know, one little boy, Marvin, uh, 12 years old, and uh, he kept calling me my friend, my big brother. <laughs> And he was, he, he saw we had a Bible, he said, uh -huh. can I, and he spoke great English too. Uh, he said, can I please have a Bible? I'd love to have a Bible for myself. And uh, we gave it to him to make sure he could read it. He read John 3, 16 through 20 or so, and obviously gave him a Bible. But uh, the impact of the Bibles is significant because uh, it could be a week to two weeks worth of salary for someone to be able to afford a Bible. And when you're living hand to mouth, when you're living on a dollar to two dollars a day, uh, the dream of owning your own Bible or having a family Bible, uh, it, it's an impossibility. And so putting those resources into the hands of our partners here uh, elevates them and the impact they're having, but ultimately it elevates the impact that God can have in the hearts and lives of the children and of the churches in Nicaragua. And thankfully, uh, we've got a container leaving next week. It's gonna have 2,000 more Spanish spread the word Bibles, courtesy of Lissi Broadcasting, that are gonna be coming into the country. You know, one of the things I heard yesterday from uh, Kendra 
is that a lot of times, many churches, there's only one Bible in the church. Mm -hmm. And so people will literally go to church yeah. so that they get a turn to read, to read the it. Bible yeah. because there's only one that's being shared by the entire congregation. Yeah. So it really is a very cool relationship that we're feeding kids uh, physically, yep. feeding them emotionally, I hope, mm -hmm. I mm -hmm. believe, yeah. but then feeding them the Word of God. And yeah. It makes a difference in a kid's life. It really does. And that's that little bit that we can do, God just adds to that. And, uh, you know, we've got our part to play. Our missionary partners have their part to play. The churches, we saw it today, you know, they've got volunteers and they've got people that, that are committed to doing the hard work of cooking the meals and being there to uh, clean up the areas. Uh, they've got uh, uh, academic advisors and spiritual advisors, pastors that are there to input into the children as well. So we all do our part and ultimately God gets the glory. And, and our friends that are watching, partners with LaCie Broadcasting, you do your part by being a partner in faith, a monthly partner with this mm -hmm. ministry. As you join hands with LaCie Broadcasting, Bibles continue mm -hmm. to go out, shortwave radio messages right. continue to go out, Middle East television mm -hmm. continues, Feed the Hungry gets empowered, and we see right here on the ground in Nicaragua and, and nations around the world just like this, the difference it makes one by one in the lives of the children and the churches and the communities at large. This is one of those countries where shortwave plays, I believe, a big, uh, a big difference yeah. in people's lives. And a lot of our programming that comes down to the south is also in Spanish. So mm -hmm. people can clearly hear the word of God by listening to World Harvest Radio. So we appreciate our partners. Because something coming up really exciting to me, and we didn't rehearse this, but beginning next week, we're going to start feeding kids in Manila, yes. the Philippines, yes. every single day. August and, 18th. Yep. yep. And uh, they're going to start actually with somewhere between 1,200 and 1,500 kids, but yeah. that's going to grow rapidly. Uh, and we're going to be working with uh, my cousin David Sumrall's mm -hmm. church, Cathedral of Praise. Uh, and they're going to be supplying the Word of God. They're making sure that medically the kids are checked out mm -hmm. and that, uh, you know, they're free of disease and that sort of thing. Uh, but it's going to make a difference in a child's life, even in the Philippines. And right. so that's pretty exciting to me. And uh, uh, it's going to be a great opportunity for us to continue yeah. to grow, feed the hungry literally around the world. Yeah, onward and upward. We had that goal of 100,000 children that we just crossed over at the end of last year. This year, uh, we'll make it up to 125, 130,000 children. But really, there are hundreds of thousands of children that we can impact through just doing our part to see that their lives never have to be the same. They can live and have a full life like God intended. That's right, but it yeah. starts with partners. So I wanna thank our partners for being a part of both Feed the Hungry as well as Lissy Broadcasting. You're making a difference around the world today. Amen.